Hey everybody, I am Grim from Star Jump. Um, you probably know me from the cinematic, uh, the Drake cinematic that was released during IAE. Um, that's CIG put up on their Twitter and on their community uh, spotlight. The Drake Interplanetary cinematic was a little bit of a passion project that turned into um, something that I was really trying to, to build into something a little bigger than was originally planned. Um, and due to the amazing amount of support that I've gotten from um, you know, the Star Citizen community as a whole and, and you know a lot of sp specific content creators that are out there that really help share the video initially and get it out there because I do not have a huge social media presence. Um, that show of support and, and that feedback has, has really pushed me to want to do more of these. So we are. Uh, the first one we're going to be doing after um, Drake here is we're going to be doing Crusader Industries. Um, you may ask why Crusader Industries. We're going to do Crusader because it is um, a, small, a smaller manufacturer in terms of uh, they have fewer ships, you know, um, and the concept phase or flyable that I have to deal with and, and build and all that. So it'll be a smaller cinematic than the Drake cinematic was uh, to handle. So I can go ahead and kind of uh, move quick on it, get another one out. Um, in the background, I'm going to start working on the Aegis cinematic, which will be a, which will be a much bigger deal. Um, there's a lot of Aegis ships um, and various, you know, varying levels of um development from CIG, whether they're in concept or flyable or, or what have you, or being redesigned. So, you know, the bigger the fleet that the that the manufacturer has, the more work on my plate. So <laughs> we've decided to go with Crusader, um, especially with the Star Runner just coming out, the C2 Star Lifter about to come out. Um, hopefully the, the Crusader industry cinematic will be something that people want to see. So I got a lot of feedback from the Drake Interplanetary Cinematic about, you know, how I, you know, what my process was, how I did these cinematics, etc. So what I thought I would do is um, show you the latest uh, teaser, and as well as um, kind of walk you through the process of building a scene and and how that works. So it's you know no no two scene is alike, um, and depending on the sort you know the model source I have, I may take a different route to get you know from A to B. But um, hopefully, um, by dissecting a few of the scenes I have uh, available to show now, you can kind of get a sense for for how the process starts and the work that goes into it and stuff. Um, Again, thank you for all the support on the Drake cinematic. I am uh, kind of one person that was handling all that. So it was a lot of work. It was a lot of effort. It was a lot of late nights. Um, of course, I do want to send out uh, an additional thank you to VMXEO from the Citizen Reactors community, as well as Sir Piggles and, and the entire Citizen Reactors community who was very supportive of the project and kind of uh, helped me whenever there was issues that popped up or questions that I had about, you know, assets or resources or whatnot. Um, also, you'll, you know, as Star Jump continues to put out more and more content, which we do plan on doing, you'll see my Star Jump partner Ender pop up uh, from time to time. We have big plans uh, for Star Jump that will um, encompass some of the stuff we're doing on the cinematic side and feed that into other projects. So, um, we really hope to be able to deliver something that's kind of different and unique from people than everything that's out there. Um, again, stay tuned for that. But for this episode, I'm calling it Making the Scene, we're going to be dissecting um, a new scene from the Crusader Industry cinematic. So without further ado, let's go ahead and watch the newest preview. All right, so you watched that. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, it's a three shot sequence. Uh, we have the star liner kind of emerging from the clouds, a nice hero shot of the star lifter. And then um, we see an 
in cabin view of the star lifter looking out on the windows we see a star or star of the star liner then we start see a star lifter going up and an aries coming in and then we cut to a shot of the star liner flying away crusader logo bing bang boom so let's start off the first thing i have to do with with any um project that I work on is, is, you know, acquire some sort of model, something to work with, right? Um, on RSI's website, they have all the hollow models available, or most of them, not all of them. Um, those models are kind of in varying levels of, you know, quality, depending on, on what CIG was doing with them. Um, so here you'll see the Starliner model I've, I've just brought in. Now, um, I am using um, Cinema 4D um, as the software to work in. That's something I, I do in my industry. I work in the film and television industry, so it's a software that I use quite often. I also use Blender and, and a few others. Um, but if I zoom in, you'll notice that this um, Starliner model's got quite a few issues. Again, this model was just put together probably really quickly by CIG in order to do concept images, right? Um, Concept images a lot of times don't need a, a fully complete detailed model because they do a lot of painting over top of it. You know, so if I was to pull up um, an image like this, which is one of the concept images uh, from CIG, you know, very quickly I could kind of, um, you know, get something just by maneuvering the ship around, um, get it in the same position here, kind of do a uh, side by side here. Uh, but, you know, very quickly, you can kind of see how that they could throw some textures on there, render this out and start painting overall and get you a really cool concept image. Um, and that works great for, you know, for stills. Um, unfortunately, um, these cinematics obviously are animated, fully animated scenes. And not only that, I have to um, a lot of times be up close to these ships and they lack a lot of detail. Uh, the hollow models do at least lack a lot of detail um, that one needs for the cinematic. Now, again, I talk about the models being in varying levels of uh, you know, varying levels of quality. Um, if it's a release ship, like let's say it's the Cutlass Black, the hollow model could be in really good shape, has all of its detail, et cetera, et cetera. For something in very early concept, let's take the Starliner for example. It's going to be missing a lot of things it needs, and some of the things it, it already you know it has in place are going to be very low quality, just sort of blocked in um, type of geometry. So if I bring over this image again, uh, this piece of concept image, one thing you'll notice is um, it's got these VTOL fans in the winglets here. Um, it's got a uh, you know a front canopy here, uh, windscreen. Um, it's got light sources on the wings here um, and other details. It's got windows here on the side. Uh, but if I go back to the model, you'll, you'll notice it's missing all that stuff. It doesn't have windows over here. Uh, we don't have a front canopy at all. Uh, we don't have any lights on the winglets. Uh, we don't have any of the VTOL thrusters inside the wings. Okay, So obviously that's a problem. It also has other issues too. Just... Um, uh, I won't go too technical on the 3D side here and in terms of modeling and stuff. That'll be a deeper dive video later, but it has other issues too. Like, for example, they have this back ramp here. This was just temporarily thrown on. This was probably for, um, again, just a piece of concept image. Um, so where do I start from here? Well, the first thing I do is I'm going to start um, detailing out the model, okay? And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab... Um, one of my models here and it uh, the some of these scenes are kind of heavy so um, just stand by I'm gonna paste this in here and I'm going to kind of zero some things out here just stand by with me um, for any of you that know uh, cinema 4d you probably recognize some of the stuff I'm doing right now uh, for those of you not familiar with cinema 4d it is made by a company called maxon and is really, really cool. Um, okay, so I'm gonna turn off, so we got two models in here. One is the CIG uh, hollow viewer model, and the other one is um, my model that I done uh, extensive rework to. Um, 
And if I unfold, so when you bring the model over from the hollow viewer, you'll notice here it's just one piece of geometry. It's it's usually not separated out. You don't have any control over it. Um, to give you a sense with my star liner, this is all the elements here that I'm scrolling through that have been added or adjusted or, or whatnot. And again, that can be anything from, you know, textures here, um, you know, microtech space lines to adding the windows, which are a little hard to see, but they're right there. Um, smoothing out some of this geometry, like on this engine intake here. Um, you'll notice in the um, in the hollow viewer model, it's all kind of squared off. It doesn't have a lot of you know nice contours and stuff to it. Not sure what CIG has planned for that ultimately, but I ended up just kind of going in and smoothing that out. I added lights um, to the model. I added internal VTOL thrusters. Um, they don't go through the bottom of the wings. I didn't go that far with it. Again, you have to kind of know what your limits are. Um, you could spend two months detailing out a ship. What you have to identify is what your shots are going to look like and how much detail you're ultimately going to need from that shot. Um, for example, if, if you only see the ship from a from a far distance, you really don't need a lot of you know detail in it. But if you're going to be seeing it up close, you need that detail um, and you need to decide where that level of detail sits. Um, I also went in and added, added like little winglets like this um, here and there. Um, I adjusted things like the canopy windscreen. Um, this was really just kind of chopped in there. You can see I can pull it out here. Um, really just chopped it in there real quick. Um, what else do we got here? Um, and you'll notice the texture is kind of crazy right now. That's partially because of the, um, of the shaders I have on it and, and the lack of an environment and all that stuff. Um, one thing I did though, let me go back to the original hollow model is back here you'll notice it's pretty low detail these little supports inside the wings um, these are pretty rudimentary and simple i'll go ahead and highlight them here um, just kind of rudimentary and simple geometry um, and then back here with the engines it just felt very you know unfinished um, and you can see where, where cig really just kind of slotted this in um, some of the engine components actually cut into the ship's wings and stuff like that it just wasn't you know, again, this was a, um, you know, something they just slapped together for concept art and stuff. So without totally redesigning the engines on the Starliner, and yes, I do realize that when this ship goes into full production, this will probably get a full rework, both in style, um, the type of engines it uses, the paint jobs, all that good stuff. But the cinematics are really kind of a love letter to the concept art. So I'm going to go with the concept art. However, there were some issues like in this engine area here where I just felt like it was a little too unrefined for the cinematic. So I said, well, I need to add some detail, right? So I'll go back to my model. So on my model, you'll notice here, uh, let me kill some textures here real quick. Oops, and let me kill um, some lights so that we can kind of see what we're working with here in a, in a kind of a grayscale format. Okay, so what I did was I started adding detail. So um, one of the things I did was just add this component here, um, which I kind of thought of it as sort of like an engine cowling, right? Um, yeah, there we go. So if I pull that out, it's just a bit of geometry here that kind of slid along this wing. And it kind of hid the fact that the engine was sort of cutting into the wing, right? You can kind of see where I faked that. And it allowed a place for me to put Crusader on the back end. I duplicated on the other side. And it gave the engines just a little bit more of a finished feel, again, without me putting a lot of work into it. Another, another place you'll notice that is um, on these simple geometry wing supports. Go back to my model, you'll notice that... Um, I just added a much more detailed kind of winglet. Um, again, didn't want to go crazy, but I wanted to give it just a little bit of something. So yeah, so there is my model. Let me go ahead and turn off these cameras. Now you'll probably notice these cameras that are in here, right? That are looking at the side of the ship. The reason they're looking at the side of the ship is for the, 
the liver the unique livery stickers on there the paint job decals whatever you call them so crusader logo would be here on the nose and microtech space lines would be over here so uh, that's what those cameras are doing are projecting those textures so i'm going to turn this off for a moment um, just so we can see the model a little better um, so yeah again there is our hero starliner um, is it as detailed as it could be no I sh the bottom could probably definitely use a detail pass but again i had to kind of know where to stop i had to know where to take it uh, for the shots that i was doing um, but again I, I think i got it to a decent place um, it feels nice and finished um, so at that point it really came down to doing texture work on the starliner which i'll go into in more depth on another video because um, doing the textures for these ships it depends on how on where i'm getting the model from what state it's in and stuff the texture process changes a little bit but what i will tell you is i'll show you a little preview here um, this gives you here an idea of the different liveries that i'm messing with and this is pretty early phase um, stuff here so here you'll kind of recognize the original um, red silver you know paint livery with genesis on the side of it the crusader logo up here these are early tests again started doing some some variants here that were using white and black kind of mimicking you know the star runner or the c2 so that's what you see here kind of like those actually um, then started doing some where it was the red and instead of the red and chrome from the original concept art it was more of a red and white which i thought was really cool um, then I started playing with other liveries like Hurston Dynamics, um, which will make an appearance in the cinematic, by the way. I'm still working through this model. This is pretty early goings here, but uh, Hurston Dynamics kind of, uh, I sort of thought it was like a maybe a Hurston, um, you know, just passenger transport ship or something. And then ultimately is the one you saw in the cinematic. This is early concepting for the Microtech Space Lines. Um, livery of the Starliner. So anyways, gives you a little preview. Once you get your model in place, you can really kind of go crazy with the with the paint schemes and, and stuff. So more to come there. And I plan on doing a lot of wallpapers too for, for you uh, Genesis Starliner fans out there. Um, so that's our ship, okay? Once we have our ship built out, once we have it textured and, and stuff and, and looking good, uh, we're then going to start blocking out a scene. So I'm going to go to scene one of the cinematic, which if you remember, I'm going to make this window big. And again, be patient. This Sometimes these softwares take a while to, to load fully. Um, so this was our first scene from the cinematic. The Starliner comes up. Our camera is orbiting around it. And we see the camera continue to angle over and zoom in ultimately for kind of a nice detail shot. Um, you know, one of the first things we had to do is I knew the ship was going to be taking off from Microtech, and I knew we would need a um, an environment to kind of replicate that. So one of the first things I had to do was find a, um, you know, kind of a really nice HDR image. I'm trying to see if I have it up over here. I've got another window up. Let me bring up that image. Let's see, do I have it available? I think it's this. Uh, might not be able to open it right here. Um, sometimes these HDR files won't open natively, just, you know, Windows. Yeah, it looks like I can't. Uh, but anyways, what it is, is it's essentially a big giant um, kind of 360 panoramic snowy mountainy environment. You can kind of see, um, I can render portions of it here. Um, it looks kind of blurry and out of focus here, but you can see it kind of render out here and it looks like mountains, kind of look like Microtech in a way. So I thought it worked. Um, but the next thing I did, uh, we're going to go to a top down view here. Um, I knew I had to have our star liner, which is, gets kind of confusing when you look at it this way, but um, kind of got our star liner. You can see it right here. Um, moving through the scene, right? It's just sort of flying. It's doing a little bit of a rotation here. Um, you kind of look at the top-down view here as well as the, the camera view. Um, Starliner's kind of flying through the scene. 
The next thing I'm going to do is put a camera in the scene, um, which is right here. And you'll notice how my camera is doing a little bit of an orbit. Okay, so here's my camera. These these arrows here showing its um, you know the angle of view here, and you can see how the camera is kind of wrapping around the backside of the Starliner, and then ultimately um, comes around the other side, right? So okay, and once I've done that. I've got my, you know, these are all the shaders that are on the um, Starliner. I've got a camera move in there. Let's say I work on that camera move, get it all nice, put a little rotation on the Starliner itself. Um, then what I'm going to do is start putting in some specific lighting. So um, you'll notice I put in a daylight uh, light over here. And with that daylight, I actually have a lot of control, right? So I can rotate the camera or rotate the light. You can see the light kind of changing on the ship itself there a little bit. Um, I can change the angle, the position, the warmth, the height of that light. And what I did was I made the light um, closely mimic the angle that the sun was coming in on my HDR, my background image. Okay, So you'll see how this kind of renders up now. It's taken a while. Um, you have to forgive me. This, this computer is kind of an old <laughs> computer. Um, new one's coming in any day now though. But you'll notice here in my scene that I got a light source over here. So I made sure to put my sun that's hitting my, you know, my sunlight that's hitting my ship over in this direction too. That way I get those natural light hits and the natural shadows and stuff. Um, and one thing you might do is if I go back to my Starliner ship here to kind of give you an idea of, of what I'm doing. Let's say I take my Starliner. I have 90 frames here, right? Let's say I take my Starliner and I set a keyframe at frame zero. I move up here, okay, and I pull the ship forward up to here, okay? Let's set these uh, keyframes to linear. That just means it won't have any like curves up and down in its velocity. So right now my ship does a pretty basic move through space, right? Pretty simple, quick shot. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my start point here, okay? And I'm going to create a camera. Um, and I'm also going to create an um, essentially a null, which is an invisible object in this 3D environment that I'll be able to do things with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my camera's view, and I'm going to get my camera in position, okay? So I'm moving around the viewport here, essentially putting my camera in the position I want, okay? So we're going to do kind of a head-on shot here something like this, which would be our ship flying directly at us, okay? So I am going to um, go ahead and set a camera keyframe. And um, so one thing that's just interesting is obviously the ship's going to fly right through and cut through us. So what I want to do is I want to make the Starliner the thing that my camera focuses on, okay? So I am going to do um, a target tag. Uh, I have to find that because, uh, it's, again, it's been a while <laughs> since I've done this um, in, on this computer, and this computer's got completely different uh, settings. So let me find that target tag. Uh, here we go, first one, okay. So in the target tag, I'm gonna um, identify the Starliner as the target. Okay, so now when the ship comes closer, you'll notice the camera cuts through, but the camera does a turn here, and then we see the Starliner leaving. So kind of cool, but we don't want to cut through the ship like that. That looks a little sloppy. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the camera out a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something like this, reposition our camera, set a new keyframe. Um, so what we've done now is we are going to go back to our view here. We're going to kind of look at what our camera is doing. So our camera is kind of coming back and turns around. So right here, we're going to pull our, oops, not the star liner, sorry. About right here, we're going to pull our camera back. Something like this, right? Just simply readjusted the camera a little bit. By doing that simple readjustment, you can now see we got kind of a rather dynamic camera move. 
right? A little weird, but you get the idea. Um, and again, we can make, you know, countless adjustments to this. So if I wanted to start the camera off high, uh, we could do that. Maybe our camera here, we go a little higher again. Maybe the camera's kind of doing a um, kind of looking down sort of angle here. Right. But then maybe our camera over here will swing to the other side just to give it kind of a, di a dynamic feel. I'm going to mark that. OK. So we'll play it now. So kind of cool. Feels a little jerky, though. And obviously we would want to work on that and kind of smooth it out. That's all part of that process. Um, and sometimes that does take some you know, some work to kind of really smooth things out. It requires you to go into uh, different modes here in Cinema 4D and start adjusting camera curves. You can see the curve down here. You start really kind of altering those curves. Okay. Um, but again, once you get your, your camera in place, your ship in place, your textures in place, your lighting in place, your HDR environment in place, um, at that point, it's just nuance, polish, etc., to get a scene that you, you know, a, a scene that that feels right and kind of hits your original vision. Um, so that's scene one of of the current preview for the Crusader Industries cinematic. Let's move on to scene two, which is kind of a different beast. Now, scene two, you'll remember, took place within the cabin of the Starliner. So you're looking out the windows, you see a star lifter, and an Ares fly by. Um, so that was, was done kind of rather interesting and the way it was built, it was built as passes. Okay. So the first pass here, um, was a pass inside the cabin, right? So we're kind of looking out the window, camera turns around, we're not seeing anything there. Now you remember from the cinematic, we see the wings, see the star lifter, the areas, you don't see anything here. So that's pass one. And you might ask, well, why would you do it in separate passes? Because I want to have control over the cabin area and whatever we're seeing outside the window. I want to have a certain level of control um, over those separately. Um, and when I when you're trying to build something quickly, sometimes it's easier just to do those as passes. And then you bring those passes together in After Effects, Adobe After Effects, and you can kind of glue them all together, but still retain control over all three, four, five passes. So this was sort of pass one, kind of the inside the cabin view, okay? Um, the funny thing about this is we are going to unhook our camera real quick. Let me do that. Where's our camera? I think it's right here. Okay, so I'm gonna unhook the camera. We're gonna zoom out. So I want you to be able to see what you're actually seeing. So from the, from the original, camera it just looked like we're inside a ship but actually all we're in is this little bit of fuselage here um, that I ripped from an airplane model um, that I, I do own um, but it's an airplane model and that's all it is there's nothing else in this scene um, and essentially our camera is kind of positioned up here and we're kind of seeing that camera movement um, but when you you know you zoom out like this, you can kind of see what you're actually seeing. So if I reactivate the camera, boom, we're right back in it. That's what we're seeing. Okay. So I knew when we looked out here, we want I wanted to see the wing of the Starliner out here. Okay. I did that in a separate pass, and that's this pass here. So this pass doesn't have the the cab window or any of that. It just has us turning over and seeing the wing, right? Funny thing about this one is if I unhinge this camera and zoom in, what are we seeing? <laughs> we're actually only seeing part of the Starliner. Uh, we're just seeing a very specific point because our camera is like right here. So we never see any more of the ship. We don't have, you know, it doesn't matter that the rest of it is in pieces here and, and uh, you know, barely intact. So kind of behind the scenes. Okay. And there's our Starliner wing. Now, um, this shot, I will say again, as I, as I said before, with this stuff being a love letter to the concept art, this entire shot was born out of a piece of star, um, 
Starliner concept art that's on the CIG website, which is this one here. I don't know who did this piece of concept art, but again, big thanks to them because <clears throat> this particular image sort of inspired this entire sequence. So um, while mine does look quite a bit different than this, I'm you know I'm taking my own artistic liberties. I'm definitely getting a lot of um, you know a lot of inspiration from CIG and their concept art. Okay. Um, just like with the Drake Interplanetary cinematic, um, you may remember, you, sorry, you may remember this shot here. In the cinematic, this is a really cool shot where the, um, the Kraken's kind of coming through the mist as like ships are landing on it. Well, that was directly inspired by this piece of um, Kraken concept art right here. You'll notice while they're not identical, they're very similar. And that's because the concept art is what inspired me. So, um, you know, again, hats off to CIG and their, you know, their amazing concept artists. This is what kind of pushes me to do these. Okay, so back to our cinematic. So you've seen those two passes, um, our window pass, our Starliner wing pass, um, but we also have other passes. We have passes like the, the star um, lifter taking off. After I was done with the shot, I'm going to After Effects real quick here. After I was done um, with this shot here, and I had the window, the cab, you know, the inside the cabin shot, I had us panning over to see the wing. I thought, well, this is cool, but it feels like the person's looking outside at something that's not there. I'm like, I need a ship there. So what I, again, because I built this in passes, I could go back into the 3D software and just render out a single ship like the star lifter in position, render that out separately, and then go into After Effects here and composite it in as a standalone. Again, thought that was great. And I was like, you know, that's awesome, but there's really a missed opportunity. I could have another ship kind of flying in here. So what did I do? I created a new pass. And on this pass, I did our Aries kind of flying here at the end. Right, you only see it for a brief moment, it's at a distance, but at least gives you that little bit of teaser of what's to come. Um, again, same process here is the um, is that first shot. You want to get your HDRI in, you get your model in, you get your, your models textured, you can see all the textures here associated with this scene. Um, you then want to get your lighting done, all that good stuff. Put your your camera nuances in there, and the camera is really the long the thing that takes the longest to get right. You, you got to really work your camera and get dynamic shots. Uh, but once you have all that, you then package this up, send it out to render, and what you get back are um, essentially uh, raw CG, as I like to call it. So I'm going to kind of solo that here. Um, so this is a raw shot from um, that first scene. And you can see it looks pretty good, uh, but looks quite a bit different from our original um, finished scene. This one looks a lot more CG. There's a lot less light play going on. Um, so the first thing I knew I wanted to do was add some more cloud cover, especially up in this area. So I rendered out a cloud pass, put that in. Boom, you can see that here. So you can see these clouds kind of move, but you can see these clouds, since they're over top of my ship render, that's a problem. The clouds are now overlapping the ship. So I have to now bring in my ship again, but cut it out to where it can fit over top of here while still seeing the clouds. So that's what this is, okay? So again, it's more like sandwich slices, right? So here's my ship, it's flying through the clouds, coming along. Um, the next thing I wanted to do was add a bit of shine, and that shine comes into play here. We had such a strong light source over here that I wanted to get um, some shine com coming over top of the ship. And I want it to be kind of extreme, and it looks a little weird here, but as we continue to sandwich stuff on top of this scene, it's going to start looking more and more right. Okay, the next thing we did was we did a levels adjustment. So this was where we adjust the whites and the blacks of a scene and kind of get that contrast set. So I'll turn that on and you'll see the change. Boom. It's very subtle um, and it's mostly just on the detail areas of the ship. 
Um, so it wasn't too easy to see, but whatever. You get the idea. So another issue here was I thought the ship was a little too clean and uh, perfect right here. So I wanted to add some grit. So if I turn this layer on, you can see how it adds kind of some grit to this. Um, if I was to turn this all the way up, for example, you can kind of see what this is. That's what it is. It's just a grit pass. Very simple, very easily um, put together. I didn't spend much time on it. Um, but when you composite in the right way, it gives the ship just a little less perfect sheen kind of going on. The next thing I had to do was this, um, you can kind of see it here. Our engine lights, our little lights on top of the ship here, these are not activated yet. And that's because I do those in a po as a post process, um, as a, essentially a separate pass and layer. So I, again, I have that added control. So I'm gonna turn on the lights. Boom, you can kind of see the lights here. Now, the funny thing is if I just solo the lights, you can kind of see, let me render that out. You can kind of see how that plays out. Um, here's our Starliner taking off you see it's like running lights and it's taxi lights and all that comes around main engine lights come into play as our camera continues to circle so this light animation is actually utilizing all of our 3d data our camera move our ship move and all that so if i kind of play this real quick you can kind of see that play out okay pretty cool um, let me re-solo some of these so we can kind of build our scene back up again. Um, boom. Okay. So here we are. We got our running lights. The next thing I wanted to do was do um, an optical flare. And that flare really comes into play here. We had such a strong light source. Again, I wanted more light kind of hitting this. So turn on the optical flare. Boom. You can see it's just a little bit of added wash. And then last but not least, another levels adjustment over the entire scene. Boom. You kind of see how it just adds a little bit more contrast back into the scene. And that is our full scene one put together. Okay. Um, obviously, sound effects and other things would come into play. Now, with scene B, um, which is this scene, Let's walk through that for a minute. So again, we start with pass one, which is just this. Okay. Start with pass one. Next thing I did was add a levels adjustment to it. Okay. This just gave us a lot more contrast, made things not as blown out. Next thing we did was we want we wanted to bring in, um, let me, uh, some essentially a blur layer to blur these fans i'm not going to turn that on real quick uh, you won't really be able to see the difference uh, but it's there um, the next thing i did was i needed to add um, a little bit of grit texture to this ship because again it was too perfect so if you notice i'll turn that off and on um, next thing i added was the star lifter i believe so I'll turn that on there it is uh, so we put the star lifter in the scene. Then the next thing after that was um, I needed to add the star lifter's thrust back in there. So this will be a subtle effect here, but you should see it. Boom. You kind of see the thrust come back on again. That was a separate pass. Um, I think the next thing I added was the Aries. That was pass five. So we add that in. There's the Aries. Again, simple placeholder for now, but the Aries is going to have a really cool scene in the cinematic. Then we added the cab, the whole, um, you know, the window inside the cabin uh, pass, which is this. Actually, no, what is that? That is, I'm sorry, no, this is our clouds. Yes, we added clouds in here. So that's what you're seeing here was additional clouds we wanted to add, not the cabin. So you can see I can kind of add those on. Now you notice they're only adding right here, and that's because I'm using a, a mat for our window. Okay, that's our black and white mat for the window. A mat allows us to cut things out and see things in certain areas and not see them in other areas. So we got our clouds in there. 
the next thing I wanted to add was I needed to add some glass, right? Um, if you go back to the full cinematic, you can kind of see how the glass has a little bit of a dirtiness to it. And that was essentially to make it feel like there was glass there. Um, so I added the glass in right there. There's our glass pass. I'll toggle that again back here. Again, right there. Um, then I added um, a little bit more cloud overlay. And then I added the window and cabin, as we talked about before, pass two, which is right here. And you'll notice that kind of hides some things. So now our scene is starting to resemble what you saw in that preview. Okay. And then I ended up doing a shine mat again, mainly on the windows, because when we're looking out here, we get this bright, warm light. It didn't feel like these windows are really being affected by that warm light in any way. It felt a little static, so we added the shine to it, which gave us kind of a warm glow coming in that window. That warm glow is kind of simulating our, um, you know, our, our light source out there. Now, um, we could have took this much further, but again, it's it's knowing how far to take a scene before you stop, right? Um, scene scene uh, three was pretty simple, so we won't go through that. Um, scene A and B were really the complicated ones. But once you get your scenes kind of built, the next difficult thing is um, starting starting to do audio. So you'll notice here, I've got audio here that I'm starting to lay in and plot out um to really get that energy and ambiance and all that stuff uh, laid in once that's all done uh, we then export it as a movie file obviously and that's compressed for youtube and whatnot but all in all it takes about three to four days per scene um the drake cinematic had somewhere on the order of like 36 scenes um however the scenes weren't work, being worked on in an isolated fashion. So it wasn't three days on one scene. It would be, I was working on three or four scenes during that three or, you know, that three or four days. And I was able to, and some scenes are easier than others and some are harder than others. So it actually ends up getting done a little quicker. Now the Drake cinematic took about six to eight weeks, give or take at night. The Crusader cinematic, I think will take about four weeks at night. Again, give or take, and depending on how, complicated we make the scenes now what we're wanting to do and what i'm going forward with and what you probably saw in this first preview is doing it all in 4k that was one of the requests from uh one of the people that commented on the original drake cinematic was that they'd love to see it in 4k well i apologize the drake cinematic's not 4k um, we're definitely going to make the crusader one 4k um, so that's pretty much it. Again, this is pretty informal. I'll do some more deep dive videos where we go through texturing, ripping the models, um, doing some modeling work to them and other stuff. But I wanted to give you just a kind of a basic idea of what goes into kind of assembling and building these scenes. I hope you enjoyed. Again, um, you know, stay tuned. Star Jump is going to release more content. Um, we're always going to release content with more of an eye towards role play and, um, you know, utilizing um cg in a way um that we're able to talk about stuff in a way that hasn't been done before so instead of just showing you concept art if we do a show where we talk about um you know ship manufacturers and we're talking about the kraken for example we want to be able to show the kraken in a way that's never been seen before um, through the same techniques we do these cinematics with um, so again we appreciate everyone's support it's been really awesome to see everybody you know um support the channel and support our first cinematic and we're really proud of it it's got a ton of views we thank cig for supporting it you know we thank all the content creators out there that were supporting it um you know execute um texas space navy dg360 uh of course montoya who is a big supporter of it um the list just goes on and on um so we really appreciate it uh again we don't Besides this channel and these cinematics, we don't really have a foothold out there in the larger Star Citizen community. So, you know, please feel free to continue to share this stuff and, and help us get it out there. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for the next one.